everyone, Rascal here. And Mama, welcome to our channel called Venom Nation and our pause on this segment. In today's podcast, we're covering the light novel series of My Hero Academia Sissy Tells School Briefs. Be sure to like, subscribe, so we can play some future podcasts and want to pause video. Yes, thank you for joining us. And from what we understand, most of the illustrations are done by Horikoshi. Yes. And if not for that, this entire book would be pictureless. <laughs> <laughs> it's just all words. <laughs> now, the idea behind it doesn't sound so bad. It's like, okay, what do some of the students do when they're not fighting for their lives in the main series? And majority of the time it's not done well in other shows and movies because the most exciting part is seeing them be a superhero it's something that takes a little great writing touch to make the mundane things exciting to watch just because or read just because they're superheroes you want to see how they do things and for school breeze unfortunately it's only halfway committed to the idea as of making this podcast there have been six, six volumes. volumes of School Breeze. The re- regular manga going to come to an end at some point, very near so now, at the time of this recording. And it sounded like it was a fun idea to see some toned down moments like in the OVAs. But then we started reading it, and the first one was just, it was just okay. Um, they had mundane things of course some little funny bits and then uh there's usually a chapter in each book where they have to deal with a villain or what they believe is a villain attack or training and aside from that the books really do stay slice of life the problem is that the slice of life isn't all that interesting for at least for us well i can say the first volume for me started off really good yes it was really interesting and that's what made me think okay They've got something here like Vigilantes that's yeah. going to be really good. The first one is really interesting and really seems to capture the feel of the series yes. and the feel of the main manga. Yes. After True. number one, then things start to go downhill, right. including referring to 13 as a man when 13 was a woman, and it right. had to be corrected several volumes later right. because they kept referring to 13 as a man. Right. So I think what kind of affects this is in the beginning, after the first volume, which maybe Horikoshi actually took a look at, Yoshi doesn't take the time to get the character personalities, traits, the feel of the story itself, the ambiance of Microdamia doesn't seem to capture it. Unfortunately, yes. And it's a shame because there were times where it did well, and there were times it didn't. Like, the best book, I think, was number two or three, where... It really felt like you're reading MHA, <coughs> just not with pictures. And especially when she had the uh, fantasy chapter, the bonus, at the end of the book. That was the best thing. Right. Out of all these volumes, I absolutely love the fantasy. And they should have been an entire book series. Yes. Just and she should have wrote, story. if she read written that, that one definitely went uh, popular because a lot of people love the UA fantasy. And what was really weird is Yoshi captured the characters' personalities and everything right. in that fantasy world. So how did, how was it done then, but not in the rest of the volumes, in the regular part of the series? Yeah. But if you haven't seen the fantasy, well, you've seen the pictures everywhere, but if you haven't read it, it's so good. Right. And there should be books on that, even some episodes, like a very short five or six episode series of just the fantasy element with Yoshi writing it would have been spectacular. Yes, definitely. And there were times in the books where, like you said, they really captured it and you're just really enjoying it. There were some hilarious chapters. And then the further along it goes, the less they started to feel like characters. And it felt like, for us, we could be wrong for how other people read it, they started not acting like the characters we know. They started getting more exaggerated in some of their traits. Like, Deku is into heroes, but, and yes, he's obsessed, but now it's like that his, it's his only trait now and no other trait. And what I really don't like is the betrayal of my Totoro 
Oh my gosh, Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris is painted as an idiot and, and imbecile, very and he's slow. very slow, oh, and he wow. never knows anything that's going on. And you know, it's lightly in the main series, but he's not an idiot. He's number two or three in the class. Yes, yeah. but in here, he's just stupid. He goes and wanders in the forest by himself looking for his mother. It's like, what are you talking right. about? He got hit in the face with the ball easily because he didn't pay attention when he was with his family. It is so weird how, and then of course, you know, Manette, they're going to treat like garbage anyway, so. And that happens to several characters, including Tanya. Everyone right. is too extreme uptight. of themselves, and you just don't care for it. The second thing that's off-putting is that clearly Yoshi favors class B, and there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. But she, is it a she? Yes, it's, it's a woman. Yoshi, what's the word I'm looking for? Sacrifices <laughs> class A for class B's a benefit. Lot. And there's one chapter where a play is done. Oh my gosh! 60 pages <laughs> about <laughs> class B doing a play. And it's 60 pages of nothing. <laughs> Monoma is the main character, and he oh just talks and talks and oh talks oh and talks. Oh for 60 pages, I kid you not. And Rascal's laughing because I'm going to tell you what I said. I was so frustrated, I didn't even want to read the rest of it. I had to read it to her. And yes, the whole thing is like, okay, you saw Class A do the, the performance of Hero 2. It's like, well, what if you got to see Class B's play? Weren't you curious? Sort of, but I didn't want to see the whole thing. Well, you get to read the whole thing, and the whole thing is just... All of all of them in the play, all the stuff they ripped off, all the little technical difficulties, and trying to make things work. And in the end, they keep trying. She keeps trying to build up class B is exactly like class A. Like, yeah, they're the underdogs. They may not be as important as A, but they still have each other's back. They still get the job done. They're still like family. Like, we understand that the whole joke is it's class B, right. and that's it. But it seems like a lot of people take this more seriously. Like, well, Class B, uh, oh, Class A is overrated. Class B deserves way more screen time, way more appreciation because they got lesser quirks and can do more than the Class A. Well, it's too she's much. A, she's a part of this, and it's so unnecessary. Because I don't think most people who watch it feel Class B is unimportant. No. You just favor Class A, and they are the main characters in the ongoing saga. Right. And it's 60 pages. When I say 60 pages, I literally mean 60 pages pages of nothing. <laughs> the first thing is Yoshi definitely has shifts that she wants to see. Right. And she alludes to a lot of them in here. They are not canonical. Some of them don't make any sense. Right. But in her world, in these books, her shifts are canon and they're not canon. And some of them, again, don't make sense. And there's too much time spent on them. So it's almost like she decided to create a world of her own based on these characters. Yeah. And not concerned at all that they're not accurate. Yeah, and it's so weird because it was such an improvement. Books one was actually not bad. Book two was okay. Book three was a vast improvement. Everyone was in character. We loved the fancy chapter. There was an understanding they had grown at the timeline of the books they were taking place. It was great. Then it gets to four and five and six, and then it just completely shut all the development off the window. Bakugo is just I'm angry at you he all is, the time. He's all no character growth right. development. He's, he's like season one all the time now and he uses even worse foul language than the anime. He uses blasphemous words that he never says in the main story. It's and like he's lost some brain cells. Yeah. It's well. just like he devotes his time. He never wants to be bothered. He, he can hit Deku Deku and hurt him, he does. He's he says swearings all the time. He's just a foul mouth a bully gangster and it's like, like oh well he's still a hero it's like it's like you're acting like you're saying something with this it's like we know this is not who he is sorry and you sum it up i think yoshi is saying what she wants to say and that's it yeah. it doesn't matter if the facts are canon or coach or anything else she's writing the world that she wants to see it's her fanfic and Pretty i think much. if it were online and that's what it was marketed as and what did you call it in 
Japanese. Uh, Doji shit? Yeah. If it was marketed as that, then it would be okay. Why? Would know. You're like, okay, but it's fine. not marketed as that. It's marketed as letting you know what goes on behind the scenes when they're not being heroes. Well, right. no, it's not. It's her fantasy, her version. And for me, I'm not really a fan of it. And that's either. unfortunate because after Vigilante and reading it, why? It's so fantastic. I just knew in my mind this is going to be fantastic too. Exactly. And it, I'm sorry, it isn't. And last it's, thing I want to bring up is that when it gets to further into the story and it's catching up to the events of the anime and manga, it's getting into the war parts and stuff, we understand it's going to have some more comedy and levity in there because you need to balance out the action. There's also an overuse of some of the Class 1A girls and Aerie. Yes. And there's no problem. I, I understand people want to see more of the girls and she deliver. But the girls' chapters, unfortunately for us, they're very... Lackluster. Yes. And, and it's a, to me an insult to these characters. Right. They went from all interesting in the anime, despite what people comment on, to they're just doing typical girl things and... The crushes, they have no actual crushes because they don't like anybody in their class. But all Endeavor. Gr- the way Endeavor's she's hot. Written, like, what? Endeavor is the one they all want. It's like, like, oh. you know, if you watch an anime or read the manga, it makes no sense. Right. They would not be crushing on him. They would or, be crushing on guys. Right. Or if they want a pro hero, they go for Endeavor. If they want a class member, they said they'd rather have Dark Shadow. And Dark Shadow's not only have far Tokuyami, but he's written like he's a five-year-old child they gotta keep coddling when that's not who he is in the main one and then with uh airy airy's just used to get cute points unfortunately she just kind of doesn't do anything she just is there for everyone to go oh she's so cute must be protected all costs and it's like we understand she, yeah she's adorable but she was having growth she's only used just to get cute points right so for us we've read the six volumes that are out i don't plan on Continuing, I would rather yeah, put my I energy that. elsewhere. But if you've read My Academia, School Briefs, let us know what you think in the comments. Do you agree with our points or not? We're really interested in knowing what you think. If you haven't read it, well, if you're just looking for something, MHA Connected, and you want to check it out, go ahead. Right, like we, we do. We recommend check out Volumes 1 and Volumes 3 mm-hmm. and skip the rest. But right. if you want to go ahead and see 60 chapters of nothing, <laughs> or just one storyline, go ahead and check it out. Come back and tell us what you think. Right, and if you haven't already subscribed for updates and movies for your anime series, anime shows, and all things animation. Absolutely, thanks so much for subscribing, for joining us every podcast, and for sharing our videos. It helps out our channel a lot. Thank you so much. And no, you are always our, our special. special. Thank you so much for watching, Rask Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a fantastic day. Peace. And the water's sitting, flashing like.